everyone. Thanks for joining me today for our pig in a wig party. So I really enjoyed this month's book with the story needs is a pig in a wig by Emma Bergeon because it's very silly. It has a lot of rhyming words, which is a great thing to practice if you're just starting to read on your own. And it also has a good plot, which we don't always see in our beginning of our stories. So we start out with our characters and setting. They have a problem. And at the end of the story, they find a solution that works out for everyone. So I hope that you also have a lot of fun reading the story. And I do want to mention that if you liked The Pig in a Wig, we do have some other books with the same character. And our author illustrator, Emma Verjean, has some other books in other parts of the library collection. So you can always take a look in the library's online catalog or come and visit us at the Kids Desk. And we're happy to help you find some more Pig in a Wig stories maybe something else by Emma Bergeon. I'm also going to include a link to the author's website down in our YouTube video description. Um, she has some fun information about how she came up with the character of Pig and Wig, how those stories were invented, um, as well as some great printables. So I hope that you'll take a look um, because she really is a fantastic author and a great illustrator too. So, We've got some projects to tackle today, all about our friend Pig in the Wig. So if you picked up your supply kit at the Indian Trails Library, you've got most of the supplies that you'll need today. Um, you're also going to want to have glue stick, scissors, and tape, and then something to do decorating. That could be crayons, markers, colored pencils. If you've got some other art supplies at home, like maybe some stickers or some sequins, you can go ahead and grab those too. And then the last supply that we're going to want to have available is going to be a bin with some water. Um, this is something that you might want to do inside if you've got a surface that you can get a little messy on. Um, you might also want to take it outside if the weather is um, making that available for you. Um, so this is going to be part of our sink and float experiment. So we don't need it right away. That's going to be the second project that we work on, but I did want to mention it so you've got some time to kind of gather all of your supplies together. Make sure that you've got a nice, clean, flat work surface so that we can jump in and get started. All right, my friends, our first project today is going to be making a pig in a wig picture. So you're going to need your pig in a wig template. Your smaller paper bag, which will have um, some cardboard pieces, a little washi tape, and some pipe cleaners inside. And then I also have my glue stick, crayons, and my tape and scissors just in case. And again, if you have other art supplies that you want to use for decorating, you can go ahead and grab those too. So Pig in a Wig is the star of our book series, right? And she has her very distinctive wig that she likes to wear. Um, and I just kind of felt like it would be fun to give us a chance to decorate our own pig in a wig. So the first step that I would suggest is adding whatever color you want to your picture. So I used my crayons to give pig in a wig her stylish red hair. Because I, I really like that. I think that's pretty fun. And then I also gave Pig in a Wig a blue top. So make sure that you've added whatever color you want. Maybe you want to color Pig in a Wig pink, or you want to give her green hair or rainbow hair, whatever you're feeling today. Once you've got your color on your picture, then we can start adding some other decorations. So part of the reason that I picked a pipe cleaner is because it's flexible and because you can use it in a few different ways. So you could take your pipe cleaner and you could tie it into a bow. And you could add that to um, Pig and Wig's hairdo. Or you could take your pipe cleaner and you could make it into like a headband shape. So you could give Pig in a Wig a headband to match her hair. Or if you're feeling really creative today, you can take your scissors and you can make a couple of small holes. And then if you have some um, beads or something at home, you could also thread them on 
your pipe cleaner. And then you can take your pipe cleaner and you can poke it through the holes in the paper. And you can either pull it through so that it lays flat against the paper and it just adds kind of a little something extra. Or you can leave it pulled out further and it could almost be um, like a 3D hair piece or a hat or whatever else you can think of. So maybe your pig in a wig likes to wear fancy barrettes and so you want to take your cardboard piece. I would suggest using tape with this um, because the back is kind of um, a shiny paper as well. Uh, so I thought it was a little bit hard to glue down, but we can whoops, add tape to the back here and then put that into Peg and Wig's hair. So you could do a couple of those to give her like some jeweled hair clips. Um, you can take your washi tape and you could put it on there. So maybe that's a hairband. Um, I think I'm going to use a little bit of my tape. I really like to wear earrings. So I think I'm going to give Peg and a wig some fancy dangly earrings here to complement her outfit. And then I think I am also going to add, put this back in here, a necklace for my pig in a wig. So I am going to grab my crayon and then I'm going to draw in a necklace and then I'm going to stick down this piece here. So that'll be like the pendant on the pig in a wig's necklace. So you can get as creative as you want. You can add other elements. You can add other color. Maybe your pig in a wig is going on some kind of an adventure today, and so you want to color in the background. Maybe she's going out on her boat. Maybe she's taking a train trip. Maybe she's going to the forest. Maybe she's having a picnic. I don't know. It's all up to your imagination. So keep adding your decorations until you feel like your pig in a wig picture is complete. And then, of course, we're going to find a spot either on the front or the back to sign our names because an artist always signs their work. And then once you feel content that your picture is complete, you can go ahead and set it off to the side. We're going to clean up our workstation. And then our next project is going to be our experiment. So as I said before, um, one of the options is going to be to do a sink or float with this experiment. So if you are going to bring out your bin of water, make sure that first of all, it's okay with your grown up. And second of all, you've got a spot where that's not going to make too much of a mess. And then we'll check back here in just a minute to see what other supplies we're going to need for our second project. A big part of our story was pig in wigs boat. So at the beginning of the story, Pig and a Wig set sail, and of course, all of her friends joined in. There wasn't enough room on the boat, and it started to sink. So of course, the solution at the end of the story was to get a bigger boat so that everybody was able to fit and have a nice day sailing. So our second project today is going to be building our own boat, and then we have a couple of experiments that we can try to see how it's going to work. So for this project, we are going to need the pie tin, the larger paper bag, um, which should also have your piece of foam inside. We're going to need our piece of plain paper. And then you're going to want to have scissors and tape. Um, keep your glue on hand as well, just in case. And then your decorating supplies. So the pie tin is going to be the base of our boat. And then inside your bag, all right, we have air. Some different supplies that we can use to create our boat and to decorate it. So our straw is going to be the mast that's going to hold up our sail. And then we have our piece of foam. So that's going to be one option for your sale. The piece of paper is going to be your other option. And then the stickers that are included are ones that you can use to decorate your boat and your sale if you would like. So the first step 
is going to be to take the base of your boat, so that's going to be our pie tin, and we're going to attach the mast. So my suggestion is to take about, that be about two inches from the bottom of your straw, it's about that big, and we're going to bend it so that it kind of looks a little bit like the letter L, right? So you want to make sure that it's got a good crease in it, so really pinch it. All right, so it'll stay in that L shape all by itself. The next step is going to be to grab your tape, and I'm gonna do two kind of medium-sized pieces. I'm gonna put the tape on this smaller part of my straw, and then I'm gonna put that in the middle of my pie tin. So I'm just gonna press the tape down to hold the straw in place. There we go. So we've got the smaller part taped down and then the larger part is sticking up. So that's gonna be the mask that'll hold our sail. And you can see mine is kind of bending over a little bit. You can always add some more tape if you feel like your straw isn't quite standing up as straight as you would like. So I'm gonna take this tape and I'm gonna attach it to the bottom section of my straw there. You can see it, that'll hold it in place. So I just added some tape right here where the bottom of the straw goes into my pie tin and then along a little bit of the L shape. So that's gonna hold it a little bit more upright so that it can be the mast in my boat. All right, our next step is going to be to make our sails. Now, one part of the experiment is going to try to answer the question, what makes a better sail? So we have our foam as one option. We have our paper as another option. And then you can talk to your grown up and maybe brainstorm together and see if there's another material that you have around the house. Maybe you have an old scrap of fabric. Maybe you have a piece of aluminum foil. Maybe you have a different kind of paper, like newspaper that you want to try. All of those would be fantastic options as well. So feel free to get creative with this. But for our example, we're gonna try the paper and the foam. So the foam is cut into um, about a six inch by four inch rectangle. So our next step is going to be to decorate this and then attach it to our boat. So we've got our foam stickers that you can use. Um, if you have something like if you have leftover washi tape that you wanna add to it or maybe something else that you wanna try gluing on to your foam piece, that would work. Um, I would not recommend coloring on it because if you try um, crayons or markers, a lot of times that will rub off because the foam just doesn't act the same way that paper does. So I'm gonna do a little bit of stickering here. I'm just gonna add a couple to give my sail a little something special. It's got kind of a spring feel to it. All right, so there is my decorated sail. And I've got to attach it to my mast. So this is a step that I would recommend having a grown-up help you out with. It's a little bit tricky, and they might be able to do this a little bit more easily. So I'm gonna use my scissors to poke two holes in my foam. So one of them is gonna to be towards the top of the foam, and one of them is going to be towards the bottom of the foam. So you can see now I've got two small holes. So this one's about an inch from the top, this one's about an inch from the bottom, and then they're, I don't know, maybe half inch, three quarters of an inch from the side of my sail. So one way that a grown up or maybe even an older sibling can help you out with this is to have one person hold the straw so that it's not bending all around 
and then the other person thread the straw through the holes that we just made. So I'm gonna line up the first hole with my straw here and just press it through. Make that just a little bit bigger here. Okay, and then I'm gonna bend it the other way so that the straw can poke through the second hole that I made. All right, so I'm gonna pull that down. So now the top of my straw is about even with the top of my sail. And then you can see that the sail is threaded through the straw to hold it in place. Now, if you feel like this is not as secure as you'd like it to be, you're more than welcome to add some tape. So you could take a piece of tape and make sure that your sail is taped to the mast. I would recommend tape. You could probably use glue as well, but I think tape is going to be um, a better adhesive for this. So when you feel pretty confident your sail is successfully attached to your boat, then we're going to bring out our bin of water and we're going to try our first experiment. So I'm going to clear my other art supplies out here. I'll grab my bin. All right, so this is a medium-sized bin, and you can see that it's got just a little bit of water, I would say maybe like two to three inches in the bottom. So it's big enough that I can put my boat in here. And then the first thing that I'm gonna try, I'm gonna turn my bin this way, just a little bit of space. And this is even something that you could do in the sink or your bathtub if you wanna fill that with water too. Um, maybe a pool, you can put that outside. So I'm gonna hold my boat on one side and then I'm going to, ooh, that worked pretty well. Did you see how fast that traveled? So test it and see how easily does your boat move with your foam sail, right? So our next step is going to be to replace our foam sail with paper and see if it works the same way. So I'm gonna use my blank sheet of paper. I've got a couple different choices here. This is quite a bit bigger than your piece of foam, right? So I want you to consider, do you think that you want to use the whole piece of paper? Do you want to cut the piece of paper to make your sail smaller? And what do you think would be a good size? I think I'm gonna cut mine just about in half. And again, I'm gonna stick with a rectangle shape, but if you're feeling creative, maybe you wanna try a triangle or a circle or another shape and see how that works. So just like we did with our craft foam, we have an opportunity to decorate paper. Um, you can use your stickers, your other decorating supplies. Since this is paper, it would work to use crayons, markers, colored pencils if you wanted to draw a picture. I think that I am going to do a blue letter K for my name. That, and then I think I'm going to add one of my flower stickers. Again, giving it that kind of spring feel, right? Peel off the back here. Okay, so once you've finished decorating your paper sail, we have to go through the same process to attach it to the mast. So I'm gonna remove my foam sail, set that off to the side. And then again, this is something that a grown up or maybe an older sibling can help you out with. We're gonna add two holes, either with scissors or if you've got a hole punch at home, that could work too. And I'm gonna do kind of the same placement. So my first hole is about an inch from the top. My second hole is about an inch from the bottom and it's like not quite an inch from the side 
of my sail. And then I'm going to line up the top hole with my straw. I'm going to punch that through. Just like that. And that, oh, you know what? If I do it that way, it's going to go upside down. Let's try the bottom hole first. There we go. So we'll do the bottom hole first, and then I'm going to take my straw and I'm going to punch it through the top hole and just slide my sail on there. And again, if you feel like this is not secure enough, you can always add a little bit of tape at the top to hold it on there. All right, so I'm going to bring my boat back to the side. Ooh, I feel like the paper is working out pretty well, too. Maybe not quite as well as the craft foam. Hmm. So I feel like for my boat, a thicker craft foam worked a little bit better. I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to take my paper sail off here. And I still have this other piece of paper that was um, left over from when I cut out my first sail, right? I'm going to cut it in half again. Right, so it's a smaller rectangle. I'm going to cut that rectangle in half. I'm going to make a little triangle. Now for this one, I think I can still probably do two holes. So very carefully, I'm going to punch two holes in my paper. So kind of that same placement again, about an inch from the top, an inch from the bottom, and a little ways in. And then I'm going to line it up with my straw. I'm going to punch through that bottom hole. And then punch through the top hole. There we go. And slide my sail on. All right, now this sail is smaller. And it's a different shape. So do you think it's going to work as well? I don't know. So I'm going to bring it over here. Ooh, it still traveled, but watch more slowly. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So based on the experiment that I just did, I think that having a bigger sail with a thicker material is making my boat move further faster. So what do you think? Try out some different sizes and shapes maybe even have another person try it if they are blowing a little bit harder or maybe trying a different rhythm. Does that change how your boat floats as well? So keep playing with it as long as you want. When you're ready, we're going to come back and we're going to try a second experiment with our boat. Our second experiment is going to be a sink or float experiment. So part of the problem that Pig and Wig had in our story was that her boat got so full of friends that she was worried that it was going to sink because all of those people together were going to weigh too much for the boat to keep floating. So we are going to test out our boats here and see will they float or sink depending on what we add inside. So I would suggest finding something that is going to be a little bit heavier, something that you have a few of at home, and that is going to be okay if it does get a little bit wet. So you might want to grab, if you've got some bath toys, if you have marbles or floral stones, we use those at the library sometime, you can go out into your backyard and maybe find some stones there. Ask for grown-up, they might have some really great ideas of something to try. And then you'll want to bring that supply to your bin where you've got your boat floating for now, right? So I grabbed some hole punches because we've got a bunch of these that we use for programs here at the library. So this is a really simple experiment. You might have done this at school before or maybe at home. We're just going to keep adding things into our boat and see how much weight it can support before it starts to sink. So I'm just going to start adding in my hole punches. You can see my boat's starting to dip a little bit, and it's definitely uneven if it's got more weight on 
one side or the other that kind of is, is tilting it from one side. and you can see that my boat is still floating. But I'm going to tell you a secret. I think it's because I only have a little bit of water in my bin, and I think that the bottom of my boat is actually resting on the bottom of the bin so that it can't um, completely sink because the top of the edge of my boat is still above the water. So I think I would actually have to add a little bit more water into my bin before I could create a situation where my boat could sink. But I want you to keep trying and see what happens when you add your toys or your marbles or your stones from outside or whatever else you can come up with. And again, this is an experiment that if you like it, you can try over and over again. So you can see if I add maybe 15 stones, my boat sinks, but if I add three apples from the kitchen counter, it floats. So get creative, try it out, see how your boat does. Is it gonna be like Pig and Wig's first boat and start to sink? Or is it like Pig and the Wig's second boat where everyone can hop on board and it's still gonna float? All right, so I'm gonna get my experiment cleaned up because we still have one more activity to try. So let's make sure we've got a nice, clean, dry workstation. And I'll meet you back here in a few minutes for our third project. Now you may not know that April is National Poetry Month. So we're gonna wrap up today playing with some rhyming words and making our own poem. So our story, what this story means is a pig and a wig has a lot of rhyming pairs. So we have pig, wig, frog, log, goat, boat, and the list goes on, right? So one of the resources that I found from Emma Verjean's website is a couplet writing activity. So our worksheet says, pig in a wig loves to write couplets. A couplet is two lines of poetry that usually rhyme and are usually on the same topic. So the examples that we have are, I love to rake the leaves in fall and toss around my favorite football. So we've got fall in the first line and ball in the second line. So that's our rhyming pair, right? Our second one is chocolate, strawberry, and banana cake are sweet desserts I love to bake. So in that one we have cake, at the end of the first sentence and bake at the end of the second one and that would be our rhyming pair. So we can get really creative on this. We've got a list of words here. So these are suggestions of words that rhyme or you can come up with your own. So let's see. So I think that I like far and star. So those are gonna be my two rhyming words. So I'm gonna flip my paper over here so that I've got some space to write. So I'm gonna write the word far at the end of the first line and then star at the end of the second line. So what can I say about those? How about I'd like to travel very far, I'd like to visit the moon and star. How about that? I'd like to travel very far, I'd like to visit the moon and star. Well, it probably should be moon and stars, that would probably sound better. But you get the idea, right? 
Now, some of you might be thinking, Miss Katie, this sounds like a lot of fun, but there's a lot of words that are really difficult for me to write by myself. And you know what I would say to that? Grab your grown up or maybe an older sibling or another family member or a friend. You can definitely work together as a team on this. You might even come up with some really good suggestions for you. So like I said, you can use the words here in the list as your inspiration. Maybe you think, hmm, you know, I have a dog as a pet. So what can I write about my dog? Hog, log, frog. Or think of your own rhyming pair. Maybe you think, hmm, so my name is Katie. Is there anything that rhymes with Katie? I could rhyme it with maybe, and I could write a, a rhyming couplet about a pirate. Who knows? So this is something that I thought would be really fun to play with. You can get creative, and you can start playing with rhyming pairs of words like we saw in our book. For the second part of our activity, we're going to take it to the next level. So this is our raindrop, raindrop sheet. So I want you to think of two different things that the raindrops could fall on because they do that sometimes in the spring, right? So we're going to think of another rhyming pair. So I was thinking about this yesterday as I was getting everything ready for the video for our program. And what I came up with was me, like my body part, and B. So I would say raindrops, raindrops on my knee, raindrops, raindrops on a bee. So I added one rhyming word in the first section and one rhyming word in the second section. And then you can see I've got two raindrops here, right? So I'm gonna draw a picture what my raindrop is falling on. So I'm going to grab my crayons and I'm going to do my best to draw a leg that has a knee and then I'm going to draw a bee. And my rhyme is complete. So again, you can get creative with this. You could think of something really silly, like, does it rain inside? No, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't be a raindrop falling on your bed and a raindrop falling on your cousin Fred. I don't know. So pick whatever rhyme pair you want add your illustration, and then of course, when you're done, you're gonna go ahead and sign your work because this is definitely a piece of art. And the nice thing is, is that you've got a blank page on the back, so maybe you're getting really creative today and you're thinking of so many rhyming pairs that they won't even all fit on this paper. You can flip it over to the back and you can keep going. Raindrops, raindrops. Mm, on my grapes, raindrops, raindrops, on my tape. There you go. <laughs> so I hope that you have fun writing your own poem. And if you come up with something really fantastic and you want to share it, you can always send it to KidZone. And I would be more than happy to see what you think of, because I think it's probably going to be even more special than what I came up with here. So have fun rhyming and writing your poem, and then we'll meet you back here in a few minutes so that we can wrap things up today. All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining me for our Pig in a Wig party today. I hope that you had a lot of fun with our projects, and I hope that you also really enjoyed our book. What this story needs is A Pig in a Wig by Emma Bergeon. So we have one more K-1 book party coming up in May, A Magic Spark. So I hope that you'll come back and join me for that one as well.
And then over the summer, we are going to take a little bit of a break. You know that summer is usually a really crazy time for us here at the library because we've got summer library adventure coming up. So I'll have some more information for you in May. Um, but signups are going to start on June 1st. So we hope that you'll come and visit us over the summer. You're going to be reading anyway, so you might as well come back and get some awesome prizes from the library, right? And then we will be starting our Chapter 1 Book Club for Kindergarten and First Grade in September. Ms. Becca and I have already chosen the first book, so we're getting really excited about this. So for all of our friends who are moving up into first grade, we hope that you'll be able to join us for the Chapter 1 Book Club. For our friends that are moving up into second grade, you are going to get to join Paperback Pals, which is our second and third grade book club. So that is also a very exciting thing to look forward to. So if you have any questions about our projects today or if you make something really awesome and you'd like to share, you can always reply to that Kids Zone email address and you know that I would love to hear your feedback about our projects and to see what awesome things that you make. So please share. And then um, we do have some other really great programs coming up in the month of May. I do want to highlight our Launchpad Makerspace. So they are open usually in the afternoons and evenings, but they've got some really cool new equipment that's available and some new kits that are available as well. So if you haven't had a chance to check out the launch pad when you come into the library, I would definitely recommend stopping in, talking to the librarians in there, asking them a lot of questions, and finding out about the really great things that you can make. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you again for joining me, and I hope that we get to see you at the library sometime soon. Bye, friends. Take care.